Happiness Day celebration of Bhakti Vinod Thakur. We are going to do a quick Pushpanjali offering thereafter Tulsi Arti and Gaurav Arti. So you will all be given some flowers for the devotees who are new. We will divide them into three sections and then offer Pushpanjali every time. You can offer your pronouns after coming at the back. Go. 
सत्योते नमो नम वृंदय तुलसीदेवाय प्रियाय केशव सच विष्णु भक्ति पद देवी सत्यवते नमो नम
कृष्ण भक्ति पद देवी सत्यवत नमो नम
Yeah. 
Thank you. Give a round of applause for Cindy. Thank you. So we welcome you all to our Sunday Feast Festival. I see some new faces today. So our next program will be a class on Krishna Katha uh, for about 40 to 45 minutes with question and answer. And then we will have uh, announcements and then we will have a prashadam after that. So today we have a special guest. Prabhuji is all the way from De uh, Detroit, USA. So please give a big round of applause. Prabhuji is uh, Nitya Krishna Das and he's a disciple of His Holiness Gopal Krishna Maharaj. So uh, just a little bit of biography. Nitya Krishna Prabhu is practicing Krishna consciousness from his childhood. He is a Siksha Guru for many in Detroit. He has been in uh, Pila in our Detroit community, guiding through his weekly program called Bhakti Diksha. He conducts Bhakti Sastra course for those who are interested in learning scriptures, systematically with deep understandings. Prabhu is blessed with the extraordinary skills to extract the core essence from the scriptures and applying it in an easy, practical manner in our day-to-day -day life, uh, the method of Bhagavad Gita. So please, have a big round of applause. Thank you. Thank you.
discussion today. Today is a very auspicious day. So we've been asked to speak on the appearance of Lord Vamande and also uh, the appearance of Srila Bhaktivedanta Thakur. So two very uh, auspicious occasions. So we're very fortunate to be here. So we'll try to cover both topics in the allotted time. I understand we have until 6.15 sharp. <laughs> and we'll leave some time for some question and answer before that. So if you're so inclined. So we'll read today from Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 8, Chapter 19, Text number 33. The Lord begs charity from Bali Maharaj. Text 33. I'll just read the Sanskrit translation for in the interest of time, and then we'll get into discussion. Tribhi kamer imalokan vishva kaya kamishyati sarvashwa vishname dattva muda katam. Translation You have promised to give him three steps of land in charity, but when you give it, he will occupy the three worlds. You are a rascal. You do not know how what a great mistake you have made. After giving everything to Lord Vishnu, you will have no means of livelihood. How then shall you live? Purport, by his divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada Ki. Bali Maharaj might argue that he had promised only three steps of land, but Shukracharya, being a very learned Brahmin, immediately understood that this was the plan of Hari, who had falsely appeared there as a Brahmachari. The words Muddha Vartishya Katam reveal that Shukracharya was a Brahmana of the priestly class. Such priestly Brahmanas are mostly interested in receiving remuneration from their disciples. Therefore, when Shukracharya saw that Balimata had risked all his possessions, he understood that this would cause havoc not only to the king but also to the family of Shukracharya, who was dependent on Maharaj Bali's mercy. This is the difference between the Vaishnava and a Smarta Brahmana. A Smarta Brahmana is always interested in material profit, whereas a Vaishnava is interested only in satisfying the Supreme Personality of God. From the statement of Shukracharya, it appears that he was in all respects a Smarta Brahmana, interested only in personal gain. Om Jnana Timirandasya Jnana Anjana Shalakaya Chakshunam Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Vishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Manupakadamayam Dirati Swapadantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Uta Padakamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavamstra Shri Rupam Sagajatam Sahagana Ragunatam Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadutam Paritana Saitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakam Vitamstra 
हे कृष्णा करुणा सिंधु दीन बंधु जगतपते गोपेशा गोपिका कांत राधा कांत नमोस्तुते दप्त कांचन कौरंगी राधे रिंदावनेश्वरी विश्वानु सुते देवी प्रणामि हरि प्रिय ಚೈತನ್ಯಪ್ರಭೋನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ್ರೀಮಸದಿಗೌಡಭಕ್ತವೃಂದೇ Thank you again for this very wonderful opportunity and to get back all of the assembled vision of us and vision of these blessings so we can discuss Lord Rama and Dave's appearance first and then again the appearance of the Bhakti Vinod Thakur. So Krishna explains in Bhagavad Gita, Janma karma chame divyam evam yoveti tattvara tyaktva deyam punar janma naiti ma iti sorjana. A powerful proclamation Krishna makes. that to become free from all the miseries of the world all stress anxiety disease old age death anybody is interested in this freedom from all this yes. just one or two okay. <laughs> he says krishna says you just need to know about my janma and karma my appearance and my activities when you know about his appearance and activities that is sufficient knowledge to go back home back to god to land of vaikuntha free of miseries and enjoy eternal bliss now it sounds easy right well the difficulty part comes in that the result of truly knowing krishna's appearance and activities is that we surrender to the lord that is the only logical conclusion that one can make when understanding about krishna's appearance and activities So we'll discuss today one of the incarnations of the Supreme Lord. You know, we celebrate the Das Avatars. But let us remember Das Avatars is like a sampling. It is just an example of some of the avatars of the Lord. Krishna has so many incarnations. In as much as you cannot count how many waves there are in an ocean, we cannot even count the number of incarnations. And Lord Vamandev is one such wonderful incarnation. And each appearance is full of so many lessons for us to apply in our day-to-day -day practice of spiritual life because otherwise it becomes just pious entertainment an interesting story something you know that fascinates the mind but let us try to take this appearance day as an opportunity to invoke some mood of change and progress in our practice of spiritual life then the full meaning of these festivals come alive So there are many lessons we can discuss in this pastime. Actually, this is one of the longer pastimes described in Srimad Bhagavatam, which gives us some indication of its importance, right? Uh, Shukadeva Goswami had limited time to speak. So wherever he spent more time, we can understand there's a little bit more uh, potency coming from that. So we'll discuss a few of the many uh, lessons. And the two I thought we could discuss today, one would be the futility of trying to exhaust our material desires uh, that is one very important lesson and the second is the extraordinary surrender of bali maharaj if the conclusion from janma karma to know is to surrender to krishna let us study and celebrate the surrender of bali maharaj it is actually quite extraordinary when we look at it in context of where he was and of course this verse is speaking where Bali Maharaj's guru, Shukracharya, has said, you are a rascal. So that would be like a thunderbolt to the heart of any disciple when the guru would speak in such a way. Right? So let's back up a little bit and understand how did we get to this point, just for a little bit of context. So we know from the beginning of this canto that the demigods and the demons have been battling. And that goes on in eternity. Right? There is battles between the demigods and the demons. We saw this in the beginning of the seventh canto. Uh, we see this now. And they were churning the ocean and through the mystical potencies of Mohini Murti, the demons lost their share of the Amrita. So what do we think their mood was? They were happy? No, they were becoming revengeful. 
So they became determined to fight with the demigods. And they made one personality the chief of the demons. And who was this chief? Bali Maharaj. So Bali Maharaj was the chief of the demons. Let's note that point. Very important. And so they ensued in a huge battle. And Bali Maharaj and the demons were defeated, virtually defeated. Bali Maharaj was almost on the verge of death, or you can say he is actually dead. And Shukracharya came and to, due to his potencies, was able to revive Bali Maharaj. And Bali Maharaj regained his life. Another important point to file away when we come to the end. So he was chief of demons, and he was revived by Shukracharya. Then Bali Maharaj realized, in order to defeat the demons, I need some potency. So what did he do? He went and began to serve the Brahmanas. The Brahmanas coming in lineage of Bhrigu Muni. So we see what is the potency of Vaishnava Seva. So Bali Maharaj became you know, a, a great uh, servant of these Brahmanas. And he amassed huge power. And so then they went back into battle with the demigods. And this time, the demons were going to come out victorious. And Lord Indra is on the verge of defeat, and he is asking his advisors what to do now. And they said, Bali Maharaj has become too powerful. How did he become powerful? By his service to the Brahmins. And so, in the Lord Indra was advised, it's better you go into hiding. So he left the kingdom, and Balayar Maharaj ascended to the throne. And in this way, Balayar Maharaj had taken over all three worlds, became a very powerful ruler, powerful king. Now, when we know, when a child is uh, subjugated to something unfavorable, who becomes lamenting, who, who becomes remorseful? Mother, <laughs> particularly mother. So mother was feeling sad. Mother Aditi was feeling, what to do? You know, my son has been usurped of his kingdom. And so she approached Kashyapi Muni, her husband. And he said, well, in times of strife, there is only one place to find shelter. And Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, Bhokta Rav Yagnatapasam Sarva Loka Maheshwaram Surdam Sarva Bhutanam if you want shantim, peace, in whatever we face, we must know these three things. That Krishna is the source of everything. He is the source of the demigods and the planets. And Surdam Sarvabhutanam. He is the well-wisher of all of us. If you know this, then you'll find peace. So Kashyapi Muni says, you must approach the Supreme Lord. That's great. You know, Muni said, I'm helpless. And he engaged her in this, this Bhayavrata, uh, this worship of the Lord, a specific type of worship that is done with milk and different other mantras and uh, procedures worshiping the deity. Twelve days she worshiped very, very elaborately. And of course, when we worship the Lord, it, he always reciprocates. No prayer to the Lord. No offering we make to the Lord goes unanswered. We may not have the fortune of seeing the answer that Mother Aditi is about to see, but we should have no doubt that every mantra of the holy names we chant, every obeisances we offer to the Lord, every heartfelt gesture we offer is reciprocated and is answered by the Lord. This is the magnanimous nature of the Supreme Lord. You know, Our friends in society may not acknowledge but Krishna will acknowledge. And so Mother Aditi was acknowledged in a very grand way. Of course, don't have this expectation for ourselves. We are not at her level of worship. And the Lord came in front of her and understood the source of her lamentation and devised a plan. Now, even Krishna himself tells Mother Aditi that, that Bali Maharaj has become a little bit untouchable. Why? because he has worshipped the Brahmins. And we know Krishna is the protector of the Brahmanas and the Kavas. Namam Brahmanya Devaya, Gol Brahmanya Itaya Cha. 
So Krishna said, he is the protector of the brahmanas. So he is also my worshipable personality. But nonetheless, I will come and devise a plan. I will appear as your son. And so he appears as the son of Mother Aditi in a very unique form. He was a brahmana, brahmachari, and a dwarf, meaning a short person. In adult age, a short, very short person. Very interesting reason why he does this. So in this way, we have the appearance of Lord Bhamandev appearing on the Dwadashi day in the month of Bhadra, which is today. We celebrated Ekadashi yesterday. We are celebrating Bhadra Purnima on Tuesday. And this is the Dwadashi day. So this is the day that Lord Bhamandev appeared, uh, answering the prayers of Mother Aditi. In, uh, and she, he appears very similar to what we read in the appearance of Lord Krishna. See, when Krishna appears, remember, Janma, we have to understand the nature of Krishna's appearance. When he appeared, them, he appeared in his forearm form, resplendent with beautiful golden dhoti, kashtaba gems, crown, jewels. Anybody has seen a baby born like this? Oh. This is not some kind of material birth that we see. This is the transcendental appearance. That Krishna appears when he wants, to whom he wants, and where he wants. We don't get to pick our birthday. We don't get to pick our parents. We don't get to pick our birthplace. That is all given to us based on the laws of material nature. But the Supreme Lord appears at his will. So he appeared at his will in this way. First, showing his Lord Narayan form. And then, back to his planned appearance as Lord Vaman. So at this time, Bali Maharaj, after having defeated the demons, excuse me, defeated the demigods, began to uh, perform a very powerful Ashwamedha Yajna. Just like we see Prithu Maharaj was performing in fourth canto, this yes, same Yajna. So Bali Maharaj also being advised by his uh, ministers, began to perform this great Yajna. And so, Lord Vamandev, realizing that Balir Maharaj is assembled with all these great personalities, he goes and approaches this sacrificial altar. And in this sacrificial altar, you know, Balir Maharaj is situated along with all the priests and they're performing this yajna. And Balir Maharaj, seeing Lord Vamandev, is struck by his beauty, his potency. And so being very cultured, he received Vamandev very nicely, washes his feet, takes on the Charnamrit, seats them very nicely, offers some glorification. This is the way that we receive a great personality uh, properly. And so Bali Maharaj being very cultured to this. And then Bali Maharaj being very smart, he asks, you seem to have come here, you're a Brahmana, you're a Brahmachari, you're of this short form, you must be coming to ask some charity. You have come to the right place. I am a rich man. I am a powerful man. All universe is under my control. And I am very charitable. So today is your lucky day. What would you like? You can ask anything. You like some uh, jewels. You want some big land, some cows. You want some girls to marry. What, what do you want? Anything you can have. And this brings us to our first instruction from this appearance of Lord Vamandev. So what does Lord Vamandev uh, apply? Yes, I'll take all of that. No. He makes a very important statement. He says that if one tries to find happiness through the satisfaction of their material desires, they will eternally be unsatisfied. There is no extent of material gain that can satiate, that can satisfy the thirst for one's material desires. This lust, it burns so voraciously. And we have this experience. The more we acquire, we are happy, we are satisfied, 
Lord Ramanda says, if you give me everything you have, which is at that point what? The whole universe. Still, I will want more. I'll not be happy. And we were discussing this morning. Somebody had a similar experience. And that was Hiranika Shipu. He had everything except for one five-year-old boy. He had everything under his control, but still was not satisfied. This is the nature of material desires. And so Lord Vamandev says that one must find happiness from the self within in relationship to the Supreme Lord. It is only through our spiritual practices that we'll find the real lasting happiness we're searching for. So Lord Vamandev says, why I should beg for all these facilities you can get, it will do nothing for me. Ali Maharaj was touched, realizing, wow, what, a, what an amazing realization. So actually celebrating Lord Vamandev's appearance is a day for us to pray to Lord Vamandev. That may you also shatter my own thirst for material <coughs> desires. Because I know now, studying your pastime, it is only a futile attempt to try to find happiness. But those material desires are pesky, are they not? They're difficult. Certain, and nothing I'm saying is something new to all of you. But still, the application becomes difficult. So on these days, like the appearance of Amandev, Lord Amandev, we have the opportunity to beg special blessings. And we should offer our obeisances to Shishi Radha Madhav Kopalaji and beg, please, Take away my material desires. Actually, Shukracharya calls uh, Vamanev Hari, and Vishnu Chakravati Thakur comments about this, that Hari is one who takes away from us. What does he take away from us? Our sources of distress. And sometimes the sources of distress, plug your ears if you're a little timid, is he takes away our material possessions. When? it becomes an obstacle in our path of spiritual life. If it is not an obstacle, no reason to remember. So when we say, Hari Bo, we're actually asking, Hari, please remove the obstacles to my spiritual life. So this is the first lesson. The second I wanted to discuss was the surrender of Bali Maharaj. Now if we take back to this verse, you have promised to give him three steps of land in charity. But when you give it, he will occupy the three worlds. You are a rascal. You do not know what great mistake uh, you have made. Who is speaking? Shukracharya. And Shukracharya is? Guru. We know. Third offense in chanting the holy names of the Lord? <coughs> Disobey the orders of spiritual master. So Bali Maharaj is now in a really precarious position. Brahmanas came to give charity. Shukracharya, due to his potency, can see this is not a Brahmana. This is the Lord himself. Lord Vishnu himself has come. And he is going to cheat you. So first thing, Guru is telling him, don't do it. But it goes more than that. Remember, who gave Bali Maharaj life? Shukracharya. So the person who gave him, revived his existence, is telling him not to do it. But even more, Shukracharya then starts to quote Shastra of why he should not grant this desire. And he gives Shastric evidence. It's compelling. On top of this, how much effort Bali Maharaj endured to acquire the position he now has. So much effort he went through. And it is at this time that he's prepared to surrender. You know, we find surrender difficult, right? But look at the position of Bali Maharaj. What kind of circumstance he was in. And what was he going to surrender? Because he knows. What did Lord Bamandev ask? Three steps of land. Actually, <laughs> Bali Maharaj says, that is foolish. You don't come to a rich man and ask for something small. 
He said, it's nothing small. I just need three steps of land. Of course, this dwarf was now going to expand. And what his three steps did, one reached to the upper planetary systems and pierced a hole in the covering of the universe. And from that came the causal ocean waters that are emanating from Karandakshai Vishnu's body that is now the Mother Ganges that we worship. His second step went all the way down to the lower planetary system, to the lowest of lowest. So now he had a stuck. Where was he going to put his third step? And it was at this point Balimraj said, I surrender everything to you. Despite all these obstacles, so much going against the logic of why you should surrender, he knew that this was the best decision, to surrender everything to the Lord. And he said, you put the third step, And in this way, he defined Atmani Vedanam, full surrender. You know, our mood of surrender is sometimes like, when I have some capacity, some spare, then I'll surrender. But real meaningful surrender is when we give that which we really need and want to the Lord. But now in surrender, let us see what was the result of Bali Maharaj's surrender? Was he left wondering where my chapatis will come tomorrow? That was Shukracharya's concern. Shukracharya was concerned that if Bali Maharaj gives up all his wealth, where my dakshina will come? How rasgullahs will come tomorrow? I don't know. But was the Bali Maharaj concerned? He knew. And what was the result? Bali Maharaj went from chief of the demons to one of the 12 Mahajans who are the authorized authorities on spiritual life. But was he left penniless, broke? No. How did he conduct the rest of his service? As king of the world. This is the nature of surrender to the Lord. When we surrender to Krishna with no expectation in return, Krishna reciprocates many, many times more than what we can even dream of asking. Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita that the pious souls, they come to me when they are in distress, need of money, wise or curious. And he considers them pious, because at least they're coming to them, coming to Krishna in time of need. But actually, when we go to Krishna with no uh, request, normally we come to the temple, please forgive me about what I'm about to say. But we come to the temple, we stand in front of the Lord, and we offer our order, our whole list of all the things we're looking for. We put a few dollars in the hundi, offer our pranams, and take prasad. It's okay. Krishna says this is very pious. Because at least you're coming to me with your desires. And ultimately I will purify you of them. Why? Because those desires in most instances are obstacles to our body. But when we surrender like Bali Maharaj with no expectation return, Bali Maharaj experienced the ultimate of all gains. Becoming a Mahajan. Eternally celebrated serving as king of the universe. And the lesson for us is that when we surrender everything to Krishna, we are the winner in that occasion. You know, in the material world, when we surrender everything to the boss, he or she wins and we lose. But in spiritual life, when we surrender everything to Krishna, we are the beneficiary. Because Krishna reciprocates money. And we have practical example of this. If there's a child in a home, and their child comes across one rasgulla. Sorry, I'm giving the prasad examples just before prasad. <laughs> but they have one rasgulla, and he offers to father. What will father do? Eat it? He'll give five rasgullas back to that child. 
Why? Because that child gave something with love. Similarly, we are true Christian children. When we surrender like this, we actually become the extreme beneficiary. So let us also celebrate this Lord Bauman Dave's appearance in trying to follow in the mood of surrender of Bali Maharaj. Despite whatever obstacles we may have, they won't, they'll be very small in comparison to what Bali Maharaj was facing. So let me conclude that portion of the discussion. Of course, there are many other topics to discuss. How Shukracharya could speak this way, all this, but there's not time. And then I wanted to spend a few minutes talking about the appearance of Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur. Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur is a great Acharya in our Brahma Madhava Gaudiya Vaishnava Sampradaya. And his glories require at least two or three sessions, to be honest. So don't take the brevity of this to indicate it's important. It's actually, it's very, very important. When Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came and performed his pastimes, he left the world with the recipe of achieving Krishna Prima, the formula. And of course, the main formula, Haranam, 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 Evakevalam, Glow, Nashteva, 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 Kateya. Just chant the holy names of the Lord. And he inundated the world. Uh, the land of India, I should say, with the holy names and Krishna Prem. But after Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's disappearance, and after some of the successors, about a hundred years elapsed, after Narutam Das Thakur and Srinivas Acharya, Janava Mata, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's true teachings were lost. They became all con uh, perverted with all kinds of misphilosophy, and the pure teachings of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu were virtually gone. So in 1838, in our Western calendar, Krishna sent one of his great devotees to come to the material world. And Bhaktivinoda Thakur appeared in 1838 in the land of Nadia in West Bengal. His name was Kedarnath Datta. He was born in a very illustrious, wealthy family. And he performed extraordinary service to revive the original teachings of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he authored over a hundred books and hundreds of bhajans that we sing. This Jayarada Madhav, Kunja Bihari. Who is the author of that? Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur. The Mahaprasadam prayers we recite. Who authored that? Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur. So every day we are celebrating his contributions, knowingly or unknowingly. Hmm? Lord Arati, yeah. So, so many of our Vaishnava bhajans come from this, from the author of Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur. So he, he wrote over a hundred books. He was considered the seventh Goswami because of his uh, uh, everyday literature. So much Shastra. He also... Interestingly, he was serving as like the perfect example of a grahasta devotee. Srila Bhakti Thakur, while authoring hundreds of books, he held the highest position an Indian could hold in the British government. He was a magistrate. He was an extraordinary magistrate. Krishna consciousness does not mean that we you know, have to give up our careers, give up career success even. How extraordinary of a magistrate he was, that he could adjudicate cases in like 10% of the time of any other magistrate. He was so effective in making decisions. When he retired, or wanted to retire, the government said no. And they built a rail line from his house. If you go to Mayapur and you cross the river and you go to his house, you'll see there's still the remnants of this rail line. They built a single gauge rail line to pick him up every day from his house and bring him to Krishnanagar just so that he would not retire and leave this court. They were so dependent on him. This is how successful he was as a magistrate. But at the same time of performing this very high service, what he, Seva he was doing, writing all of these books, he was chanting 64 rounds a day. He was preaching to all the local community members, trying to eradicate this misconception of Jaitanya Mahaprabhu's philosophy. He is the one who discovered 
Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's birthplace at Yoga Pit. He was sitting on his veranda one day and he saw lights emanating across the field. And he took his spiritual master, Jagannath Das Babaji, carrying him in a basket. He was over 125 years old at that time, Jagannath Das Babaji was. And took him to this place. And immediately Jagannath Das Babaji started jumping out of his basket. And there, um, Bhakti Thakur saw the tulsi leaves were growing in a dense jungle and understood this is the actual appearance place of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Chila Bhakti Thakur then performed the greatest of all service that we are all the beneficiary of. Why we are directly connected to Bhakti Thakur? Because it was he who proclaimed that soon Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mission or proclamation of in every town and village of the world, the holy names will be chanted. He said, soon someone will appear to make that happen. Then he said, his second proclamation, that soon there will be uh, Western bodies, Asian bodies, black bodies, Indian bodies, all dancing together in the streets of Navadvi, chanting the holy names. This was like an unthinkable proclamation this time. Today it's like, of course, we go for Gaur Purnima festival. But he made that proclamation. And then he prayed. He prayed intensely to Lord Jagannath. That give me a son. He actually had 10 children. But he wanted, needed one son who could make this proclamation of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu come true. And that son was of course born. He named him Vimala Prasad who became Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. That is the son of Bhakti Vinod Thakur. And of course, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, on that fateful day in 1922, gave, at the time, the name of uh, Abai, the great message that you go and preach to the West this message of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And of course, Srila Prabhupada took that message as the life heir of the rest of his time on this planet. And all of that started by the blessings and mercy of Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur. So he is a great Acharya in our Sampradaya. He established so many innovative preaching programs, again, wrote so many literatures, so many of the bhajans we sing. And again, we need many sessions like this to, to just scratch the surface of his glories. But in the time allotted, uh, that is just a small offering at the feet of Sri Bhakti Thakur. Thank you very much. Any questions, comments? We have five minutes left. I was told to leave some time, so I'm trying to end that time. Prabhuji is sitting with a stick to make sure I don't go late. <laughs> any uh, comments, discussion, any about something we can have? Huh? Oh, okay, I can speak up with Bhajan Purnima? Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Okay. We also have a devotee, Abhinanda. He's going to today uh, play our six precepts. Uh, wow. Wow. He will play 60% of them. Wow. And he has done 20%, like 20 books. 20 percent right. Wow. So, all of you might be knowing that Bhajan Purnima is coming up on Tuesday. It is a very auspicious day. Um, that it is said in 12th canto Srimad Bhagavatam that if one delivers a Srimad Bhagavatam set to somebody on this day one can achieve liberation perfection of life by just distributing one set of Srimad Bhagavatam this Srimad Bhagavatam it is the Amala Puran it is the ripened fruit the essence of all our Shastra, so sweet. And Srila Prabhupada's contribution to us is his translation of this Srimad Bhagavatam. And this is the opportunity that we have to uh, sponsor a Srimad Bhagavatam set for a friend, a family member, a loved one, even in your home. 
If there are three people in the home, how many cell phones do we have? So how many Bhagavatam sets we should have in the home? One for each person. Everybody should say, this is my set. We should become possessive. So don't think, oh, I already have a set. Maybe I have two. You count the number of family members in your home. And there's a very special offering today. I'm told by Prabhuji that someone is sponsoring 60% of the cost. So your cost is only 40%. Where you can get this type of bargain, this is a sale you cannot pass up. So please step, come forward and sponsor at least three or four sets of Srimad Bhagavatam for your family members, friends. If not three or four, at least one set of Srimad Bhagavatam for Badrapun. And I would like to do one set. Abhinandan Prabhu. Abhinandan Prabhu is the one who is sponsoring sorry, these uh, just 60% of the cost. This is a deal you can't pass up, so thank you very much, Prabhuji, for a very generous donation to support the distribution of Srila Prabhupada's books. This pleases them very much, so please, everyone, take advantage of this rare opportunity. Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada ki, Ananta Koti Vaishnavinda ki, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada ki. So on behalf of Shri Shri Radha Madhav, Lord Shinaji, Shri Shri Gohanitai, we like to welcome you all to our Sunday Feast Festival. We also like to welcome anybody here for the first time. Please raise your hand if you're here for the first time. We have a special gift for you. <laughs> anybody else here for the first time? Please raise your hand. What's your name, Mataji? Yeah, yeah. Komal. Give a big round of applause and welcome Komal. We have a special gift, so please raise your hands if you're here for the first time. We'd like to acknowledge you for being so kind and coming to our temple. There are quite a few. What's your name, Mataji? Yeah. Naina. Naina? Give a big round of applause for Naina Mataji. Anybody else? Yes, what's your name? Fagya. Fagya? Yeah, big round of applause for Mataji. And what's your name, Mataji? Puja? Priya. Big round of applause for Priya Mataji. I think Prabhu, you want Prabhuji hands up over here. And hey, what's your name, Prabhu? Aplus. Give big, a big round of applause for Aplus. Yes, what's your name? Rupika. Rupika. Another big round of applause for Rupika Mataji. Yes, Mataji, what's your name? Parman. Parman. Another big round of applause for Parman Mataji. And a big round of applause for Neelam Mataji. And there's one Mataji at the back. Yes, Mataji, what's your name? Naresh. Big round of applause for Naresh. What's your name? So? So, Nita. Another round of applause for Nita Mataji. So we thank you all for coming, and we really hope that you keep uh, coming every Sunday, and we also have uh, festivals coming up, so please uh, be informed through our social media, and you can get all the information of our timings and everything in there. We also like to welcome uh, Jack Sohota. Is she here? Yeah, so Jack Sohota is, uh, is uh, running for MP for Skyview Riding. And uh, which includes the cityscape, Redstone, Cornerstone, Livingston, Carrington, Panorama, and Coventry. So please uh, support her in any way you can. I'd like to call upon Jack Sota. We can give her guidance. Thank you. Like we said, please give her all the support you can. Today's feast is uh, sponsored by uh, Rakesh and Sunita Arora and family. And a huge round of applause for this family. Rakesh Prabhu has also donated 11,000 towards our new temple project. 
and has also promised to be one of the top donors when we start building the temple. So can I call upon uh, Rakesh and Sunita Mataji to come up here? Rakesh Prabhu and Sunita Mataji. So Rakesh and her family has blessed to be the one of the top donors when we start building the temple. So another big round of applause for them, please. And a special uh, announcement now. This we, we, we don't have a uh, projector, unfortunately. Uh, we'll have it fixed this week. Uh, this week on Wednesday, from Wednesday, we have uh, three devotees from TOPP Mayapur, India coming and visiting our temple for a week. The theme of the tour is Lord Narasimha Dev is coming. They will be uh, carrying with them the Satari of Mayapur, Narasimha Dev. Do, does anybody know what is Satari? What is Satari? Is the moment? Blessings. Blessings. And they are also bringing pad uh, padukas, which is shoes of Lord Nityanand Prabhu. <coughs> Their method is to inform all the devotees that the Narasimha Dev wing of the TOVP has been opened and they are now focused on raising the funds needed for its completion currently at 80%. Accompanying the Lord in his satari and paduka forms are their devoted servant, the head priest of Mayapur temple. Does anybody know who he is? Yeah, he is coming. And also uh, Braj Vilas Das and Surandar Das Prabhu. They are also in the da directors for TOPP fund uh, fundraising. So here's a catch. Now we are looking for families to hold some house programs. Uh, so the, the dates are September 19th, Thursday, which is this coming up Thursday, and then on Friday 20th, and then on Monday 23rd, and on 24th on Tuesday. So we like to hold, they like to hold four house programs here in Calgary, and then we'll have a Sunday feast program next Sunday, and also they're going to be going on Friday evening to Red Deer and to Edmonton on Saturday and Sunday morning. So please, if you do want to uh, have a house program, you can uh, contact me and we can engage, uh, get things running. It's a great way to have your house blessed and protected by pure devotees coming to your house and they are bringing with them divine satari and also padukas of Nityanand Prabhu. So it's a great way, you cannot miss it. Like if you want to purify your house, if you bought a new house, please invite them and they will be more than welcome to come. You don't have to worry about uh, making any prasadam, just have a small fruits for them and uh, invite all your fa families and friends. So it will be a nice program you can hold. Uh, yes, you can contact me if you need more information on that. Today is the last day for uh, registration for sloka class. We are learning chapter 15 this time. Also, the class is open not just, not just for kids, but also for adults. In case you are interested, please contact Aparupa Radhika Mataji or Aruna Chitra Mataji for more information on that. I'd like to call upon Krishna Vidya Das Prabhu. Hare Krishna. So as you all know, as uh, Admara Prabhu knows, right, we are building a new temple. And uh, as Prabhuji already has planned us $11,000, and he's going to be our, uh, one of the top donors in the coming days once the construction starts. 
So my, I'll just give it because uh, uh, Prabhuji has invited some guests, right, who are present in the congregation today. So I will just go to kick whatever this new temple project is. Uh, we have already bought the 4.7 acres of land on the northeast. It's in the corner of Country Hills Boulevard and uh, Stony Trail. The legal address is 1071 7R84 Street. So we have already paid for the land by the donation of all those kind devotees, right? They have they made enough donations, so we've been able to pay off the land. But now we are generating the funds to build the temple itself. So for that, we need everybody's support. So please help us that. And whatever support you do, whatever you help us, you will get a donation receipt for that. And it's a, you can claim it on your taxes, whenever you file your taxes. And uh, our total goal is to raise $5 million for this new temple project. So my humble request is that please help us in this endeavor, you know, as scriptures say, right, if you help build a temple for the Krishna in this planet, then he will build a palace for you in his abode, Vakuntha. So my humble request to everybody, please help us in this endeavor and get the blessings of Shri Shri Radha Madhav. And not everybody gets this opportunity to get the, you know, participate in building the temple. You know, so please help us in this endeavor, in this building the new temple and support us in whatever way you can and get the blessings of Shri Shri Radha Madhav. And now I want to say uh, two minutes for that. As you all know, right, Petra Paksha, Sharad, properly known as, it's starting on the Tuesday, and uh, it uh, will be finishing on the October 2nd. And uh, even in the Bhaktam, this is from the Srimad Bhaktam, 7th Canto, 10th Chapter 22, uh, after this is the Lord Hirane is, uh, uh, sorry, Andrashinga uh, is telling Pradhan Maharaj, my dear child, your father has already been purified just by touch of my body at the time of his death. Nonetheless, the duty of a son is to perform the Ashrat ceremony after his father's death, so his father may be promoted to a planetary system where he may became, become a great citizen and devotee. So we all know, right, in our tradition, right, Hindu tradition, people usually come and donate on these 15 days. And uh, so my humble request is that if you, the we, temple requires the following ingredients, if you can bring these ones, so, like sunflower oil, cumin seed, commonly known as a jeera, a saffron, kesar, ghee, sugar, rice, paneer, butter, yellow moong dal, and tur dal, cashews, Himalayan, uh, Himalayan uh, pink salt. And uh, as I said, right, uh, people like to usually donate the food on these days, but also you can, in these days, you can help build us a temple and donate towards the new temples on the name of your ancestors, whoever you want to, you know, donate, you can do that too. This is a great opportunity in the next 15 days, next two weeks, you can do that. And, uh, or you can donate the, as we are celebrating the Bhadar Purnima on Tuesday, you can donate towards the books, right? So if you want to sponsor the Bhaktam set on your name of your ancestors or Bhagavad Gita or Bhaktam set or any books, you can do, that's also a great donation. So please help us, and as the, I announce these items, we'll be posting on our website. So if you are bringing any donations to a temple, please bring these items. These items we need in our daily use. We cook the bhoga for the deities and for the Sunday feast. If you can bring these items, that will be very nice of you. Thank you, and Hare Krishna. Also, we have one more visitor coming next week. It will be Daswatar. Daswatar has been saving His Holiness Gopal Krishna Maharaj, his personal secretary, for about 12 years. So he's coming from Delhi and will be staying in our temple with us for about two days next week. I will give you the final dates when, once I get it. Thank you. Uh, today's donations are as follows. Uh, Sangeeta Catering Services donated $150. Rakesh Aroda donated $183. Uh, one devotee donated $485. And Creative Reynolds donated $555. Thank you. Those are all the donations tonight.
So as we heard today that uh, Bali Maharaj surrendered his wealth in totality to uh, the Lord. So we may think, oh, that was a very fortunate opportunity he had to have darshan of the Lord himself, to be able to surrender and take the foot of the Lord on his head. But actually we have the exact same opportunity because to build a home for the Lord is the ultimate seva because that seva will accrue to each of us for the total duration of time that the Lord has served. So it is a great opportunity and we don't have to surrender 100% of our assets like Bali Maharaj did. But we all can give something. Uh, actually, the opportunity to renounce some of the fruits of our work is our greatest fortune. Because everything we are creating in this world, it is only done by the Lord's mercy. We came into this world with nothing. And we're going to leave this world with nothing. So everything between point A and point B, we're simply using the Lord's resources. So whatever we have created by using the Lord's resources and His blessings that we call our possessions. Is it not that we can give something back to the Lord in acknowledgement of the blessings we receive? Every day we are drinking the sunlight to nourish ourselves, the plants, the food we grow. We are taking the rains, we are taking the earth for all its minerals and everything to subsist our life every day. And so by donating to a temple, it is an opportunity for us to reciprocate for the Lord eternally. And again, we are the beneficiaries. So we can pray to Bali Maharaj for the inspiration to be able to uh, give generously to support this temple and make it happen as soon as possible. As quickly as uh, I'm sure funds are come, the team is ready to construct, the land is purchased, so please let us join together as a community and um, help build this temple as quickly as possible and reap the benefits uh, like Bali Maharaj did. Hare Krishna. So now we'll have a prasadam prayers and then we'll uh, pick up a line this way. Prashadi Govinde, Mahaprasadi Govinde, Namo Brahma.